Our epistle lesson today comes to us from Revelation chapter 19, and it serves as the basis for our message today. John writes, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is Revelation chapter 19, which we read just a few moments ago. So in a word, celebrations. They take a lot of work. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are a lot of fun, but if you're the one hosting a celebration, it's a lot of work. I mean, there are those among us today who have that gift of hospitality, you know, folks who just love and they live to put on a party, because for them it is a labor of love. They take great joy in seeing the joy in all of you as you partake of food and a meal and conversation and games. Now, admittedly, the gift of hospitality is not a large part of me. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I do like celebrations, and I'm willing to help set up and clean up. But I'm not really into the work of hospitality. I'm one of those who's happy to sit and to listen, say something occasionally, and of course, share a meal. But for me, and just enjoying the company of family and friends, and seeing and experiencing the growth of those friendship bonds, well, that's, for me, that's where it's at. Now, perhaps you have the gift of hospita hospitality, and then again, maybe you don't. But it really doesn't matter, because today's theme is for you. Our theme today is renewed celebration. And that is our part of our life of renewal in Christ Jesus. For not only does renewal come with repentance and forgiveness, but also comes with a renewed love and a renewed song, and yes, with renewed celebration. Hear this word from today's text. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Pastor Arp told us last week that sometimes it's necessary to start at the end. And that is what Scripture is sharing with us today. For the marriage feast that is described in today's text is the culmination of all of this earth's history for those who believe in Jesus. No matter what happens to us in this life, whether we live or we die or suffer or mourn, this marriage feast is coming. And it is the beginning of life everlasting in the new heaven and the new earth that will dawn at the second coming of Jesus. To help us see this a little bit more clearly this morning, we need to study this word blessed or blessed. We also need to take a closer look at this picture of marriage. Now, the dictionary defines blessed as a fullness of life or earthly well-being, riches, honor, and wisdom. But this word, blessed, oh, it is so much more. Being blessed is being fully satisfied. Can you even imagine that? I mean, think that through for just a moment. 
Do you even have a clue what it means to be fully satisfied? What do you think life would be like if you were fully satisfied? I think my response would be, yeah, I want that. And that's our first point this morning. So either write it down or hold on to it any way you can so that you do not lose that as we go forward. You will be fully satisfied. So what is this Feast of Celebration? Well, as we've already said, it is the consummation of the permanent and everlasting union of Jesus with His church. He is the bridegroom, we are the bride. They are meant to come together. And to help us see this a little more clearly, we're coming to our second point this morning as we look at this process for marriage in the context and place of this writing. We move now to the Old Testament book of the prophet Hosea to to see that despite the spiritual adultery of Israel, God brings the reality of his faithfulness to his people Israel. In the picture of a faithful husband, as he says through the prophet, this promise, I will betroth you to myself forever. To model this for Israel, he instructs Hosea to buy back his unfaithful wife Gomer and renew their marriage vows of faithfulness. And in so doing, God shows how he intends to bring his people back to himself their rightful husband. So let's hear the fullness of what God says through the prophet Hosea. And I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. And you shall know the Lord. Now for this moment of betrothal, it is normal for a groom to pay a betrothal price to the bride's father. And how does God produce this price of betrothal? Through the birth of life, death, and the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the betrothal price that God paid in order to purchase His people as His bride. Now, marriage had two major events. First was the betrothal, and then the wedding in itself accompanied by a feast. The betrothal was taken very seriously, It was tantamount to marriage, but the betrothed couple did not come together and live as husband and wife until the wedding and its feast at some time in the future. The wedding ceremony and the marriage feast usually took place at the house of the bridegroom. And that feast, well, it could last anywhere from one to two weeks. Can you imagine a party that lasts two weeks? Now that is excitement. Well, now that you have these two points tucked away in your minds, right? Fully satisfied. A celebration knowing the Lord. You can hear this portion of our text again anew. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those who were invited to the marriage feast of the wedding between Jesus and a church at his second coming will be blessed, fully satisfied. Their clothes will be washed white by the blood of the Lamb of God. There will be no more suffering or no more pain, no more mourning, no more tears, no more death. It will be as as if a cloud has parted and you are seeing the sun for the first time. You will be truly renewed like you have never known before. The 
The New Testament builds on this Old Testament promise of God. This imagery of this divine marriage between God and his people expands to include the new Israel, both Jew and Gentile, all who believe in Jesus as their Savior and King. And the promise remains. At some point, there will be a wedding, there will be a feast. The feast to which all of you will be, cel- will be invited and celebrate the fact that God has completed his work of winning back and redeeming his people. This feast will launch life with God face to face. And it will never end. That is longer than two weeks. For through the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus, sin, death, and the devil are defeated. The new heaven and the new earth are coming. And at the coming of Jesus, he will establish his kingdom for and with his people forever. The celebration that begins with this marriage and feast brought by the Lamb of God to His church. My friends, this feast is for you! But wait, there's more. Look at how the bride is described being adorned in this passage. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Scripture teaches that the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. This reveals to us that we cannot please God without faith. Which means that it is impossible to do good works in the sight of the Lord without faith. This realization means oh so much more when you realize that faith is also a gift from God. It helps us to see even more and more that God is so good. So good, in fact, that in addition to our white robes that signify we are washed clean by the blood of Jesus, he gives us an additional garment, an adorning. The adorning of our good works. And what does this garment of good works bring to the celebration? Why, it glorifies God. For Jesus said, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You see, the event of Jesus' second coming brings with it more than just the marriage of the church and Jesus and a feast of celebration. It brings more than just the cessation of all pain and sorrow and mourning and tears and death. It brings glory to God. Can you imagine it? The renewal of flesh. The renewal of your spirit. The renewal of love and of song and of celebration. And yes, we even have two more weeks of renewal to go. So there's more to come, but we'll get to that in the next couple weeks. But with that in mind, giving glory to God, let us pause for a moment. For if your heart is anything like mine, you have doubts. We hear about this feast in the words of this eternal praise to of our God, which is totally right and true to do, but 
it's still a little harsh to our sin-filled ears. I mean, praising God forever? I'm not sure I can do that. I mean, how will that be possible, we ask? Can we really have a renewed celebration? Well, why can't you? Yeah, I, I know. You've been unfaithful this week. You've taken the name of the Lord in vain. You've cursed your neighbor. You've committed many sins. But remember, He just restored you through confession and absolution here in this service. Don't you see? <laughs> you are the very center of God's attention, just as the bride is the center of the attention of the groom. You are in His every thought, action, and judgment. He has bought you with a price. The holy and precious blood of Jesus poured out on the cross of Calvary. The same Jesus who now reigns in a raised and glorified body working to bring about this restoration, this wedding, and this feast for His bride. So repent and believe the gospel. Because praising God forever will be easy. He promised that everything will be new. There won't be any more sin-stained memories or inclinations or leanings to cause you pain. For your God will have made you new and perfect. Paul tells us in a direct revelation from God that whether you are alive at his second coming or raised from the grave, you will be made immortal and imperishable. In short, you will be perfect. Perfectly restored to what God fully intended you to be. Your every thought and your action will be for your neighbor and their every thought and action will be for you. This will be like nothing you've ever experienced before. And you will understand. And you will be glad. So glad that the rejoicing will just burst from your lips without any effort. And yes, since you will be perfect, you will sing in tune with everybody else. I mean, can you imagine what this heavenly choir will sound like? It will be like it is described here in Revelation and even in this chapter. This tedeum, this starting in heaven and growing and growing till all of creation is singing will move your heart and your mind and your very soul like nothing you've ever experienced here on earth. My friends, my brothers and my sisters, at His coming you will know true joy. So renewed celebration, what does that mean? It means that no matter whether you have that gift of hospitality or not, you are going to get to celebrate God. And what He has done for you through the work of His Son, Jesus Christ, now and forever. For he has, be, he has already paid the price for you. And you are His. And He is renewing you for this celebration to come. A celebration that will be the pinnacle of all celebrations where you will get to sit back and enjoy the feast. For that feast will celebrate you and it will bring glory to God. <laughs> I cannot wait. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
That brings us to our weekly awakening question for this week, which is simply this. How will you celebrate being made new in Christ? How will you celebrate being made new in Christ? That's something to think about. 